Hello and welcome. You are watching the daily statistically speaking polls where we bring you the pulse of the people. Today our focus is on the state of Odisha which will be voting in four phases from the 13th of May to the 1st of June. Not just for the 21 Lok Sabha seats but also for the 147 Assembly seats. Naveen Patnayak has turned Odisha into his fortress being in power for the past 24 years. And the performance is replicated year after year despite the simultaneous polls with the Lok Sabha. In 2019, for example, the BJD won 12 out of the 21 seats in the Lok Sabha and the BJP made the contest significantly interesting by winning 8 seats compared to the one seat they won in 2014. But despite a close contest in the Lok Sabha seats, in the Assembly, it was all the BJD which won 112 out of the 147 seats. This time, the contest is expected to be much closer with the direct competition being uh, uh, witnessed between Naveen Patnaik and Narendra Modi. We've held a survey to understand what the people feel are the biggest factors. We go straight into that. Let's start reflecting our first survey result on our screens. We asked the people of Orissa, what is your biggest issue in the Lok Sabha elections? 23.97% uh, people said development, 9.93% say inflation, 12% people say corruption, 43% people say unemployment. So the biggest issue in Odisha for the people continues to be unemployment followed by development. Let's go across to the second question that we asked to the people of Odisha. On what basis will you be casting your vote in the Lok Sabha polls? 27% people say it will be on the basis of the party. 19% people say it will be on the basis of the candidate. 1% say religion. And 51% people say it will be on the basis of the work that is done. Let's go across to question number three now, if we can, of the Urissa poll. How has Narendra Modi performed as Prime Minister? 23.27% people say that his performance has been average as Prime Minister. 35.83% people say that his performance has been good. 33.72% uh, people say very good. And 7% people are not being able to make up their minds. But the majority of the people there, over 60%, feel that Narendra Modi's performance as Prime Minister has either been good or very good. The fourth question that we pose to the people of Odisha, how will the Modi factor work in the Lok Sabha elections? 15% people say that uh, his performance or rather the Modi factor in the Lok Sabha elections will be average. 31% people say that uh, the Modi factor will work uh, in a good way. 36% people say it will be very good while 13% people feel that it won't be good. So once again, majority of the people feel that the Modi factor could possibly work this time around as well. And the last and most important question that we pose to the people of Varissa, who do you think will form the government in 2024? 55% people say it will be the NDA, 5.64% people backing the INDIA alliance, 35% people saying that it will be the government with certain regional alliances. So a large number of people there backing the Bharatiya Janata Party led uh, NDA to be coming back to power as far as these polls are concerned. I have with me Chandni Pritisha, political analyst, and uh, we also have uh, Manasha Tripathi of the Congress with us on the broadcast as well. Let me begin this conversation with Manasha. Manasha, as far as the state of Odisha is concerned, the Congress party has seen major victories in Karnataka. It's seen a major victory in Telangana as well. However, as far as Odisha is concerned, like I said, it has been a fortress of Naveen Patnayak for the past over two decades now. The BJP somewhere managed to really improve its performance in the last Lok Sabha election. They started with one in 2014, but came up to eight in 2019. Oh. As far as the Congress is concerned, is it worrying for the Congress that it doesn't really feature much in conversation as far as the state of Odisha is concerned? No, no, ma'am. If, uh, if you consider the elections matter and the history of Odisha, then you will see Congress is doing and, uh, and reaching the people at its utmost level. 
and the uh, figure of the Nabin Patnaik is totally failure, is a big zero in Odisha right now because uh, there are many factors which are affecting the picture or the government itself because uh, in, in NCRB reports, uh, you will find Odisha topic in every sector, like in rape, uh, in rape cases, uh, in domestic violence of women, uh, in uh, women abuse, Odisha is topping and Odisha is leading in every sector. And the most uh, thrilling uh, and uh, very uh, hurtful thing that this government is doing is right now uh, that uh, the many of the MLAs and ministers of the party uh, is seeing involving in the rape and murder case of the women in Odisha. And uh, if you consider the uh, talk and the issues of Odisha, the BJP is completely silent in Odisha and it's uh, supporting it's fully to, to, to the BJP government and internally they are togetherly uh, going to uh, participate in the election and togetherly they are uh, contesting and reaching people because they are two sides of a coin in Odisha. Uh, in, in media, in a, they, they may not they abuse each other in state. But in Delhi, in centre um, committee, they okay. are all uh, all together, and they are fighting and they are protecting uh, each other in the uh, centre level, and they are not abusing each other. They are uh, so the people of Odisha has now realised that if they choose any of them, then they are choosing violence. Then they are choosing, they are choosing abuses. Then they are choosing. Um, they, then they are choosing unemployment. So now, if you study, if you come to Odisha, you will find many of the youths, many of the students, and many of the women are raising their voice their Odisha. Okay. All right, uh, Manasha, I'll come back to you. Dr. Mukesh uh, Maling of the BJP uh, also with us on the broadcast. Dr. Mukesh, uh, we asked the people of Orissa what continues uh, to be their biggest issue as far as uh, these uh, elections are concerned. And a large number of people say it's unemployment followed by development. Uh, how does the BJP then react to that, given that your entire poll pitch and narrative is in fact about employment and development? Okay, I seem to be having a lot of trouble there with our uh, political guests. Uh, we'll see if we can bring them on the phone uh, to take this conversation forward. But uh, let me then bring in our political analysts and journalists into the conversation. Let me begin with uh, Chani Preeti Shah. Chani, uh, what is your assessment as far as the state of Orissa is concerned? Uh, of course, there was an attempt by the BJP and the BJD to come up with some sort of a pre-poll alliance, but we've seen that that's not happened in the past. It's in fact suited both the parties to go solo. And of course, we've seen in the past uh, Anavin Patnaik extending uh, his uh, support to uh, the government in the center. But do you feel uh, that this is a strategy that definitely works uh, also uh, you know, for the BJD because it does not want to in any way confuse the voter as far as the polls are concerned, uh, given that Orissa's uh, assembly elections happen simultaneously with the Lok Sabha elections. So you don't, as a BJD, as a regional party that has maintained its position, but has also now seen that last time around the BJP did make a big inroad as far as Orissa is concerned uh, in the Lok Sabha uh, elections. So you don't want to further confuse the voter. Uh, so, Devika, it's not about, uh, you know, further confusing the voter or something. See, Naveen Patnayak is uh, one of the rare leaders of opposition who has actually earned in, uh, respect when it comes to, you know, leadership qualities. Like, Orissa has undergone a significant transformation under his leadership and uh, it transitioned from a backward state to a thriving, uh, you know, de uh, development laboratory. So, um, his, uh, you know, key initiatives for like 5T action plan for higher education, Biju uh, Swastya Kalyan Yojana, these are very good uh, health schemes and, you know, uh, uh, infrastructural developments that he has done. 
and there are reports that there is a sentiment of anti incumbency towards uh, navin patnaik with regards to his age and his tenure but i think that's not of prime importance now when we come to think of uh, you know uh, the seat sharing i think uh, whether uh, bjp and bjd are official allies or not they have a very strong identical ideological inclination i mean the relationship between the center and the odisha state government so uh, by that i mean mr uh, between mr narendra modi and mr navin patnayak it's characterized by uh, a mutual respect uh, they have a very shared dedication to federalism they have a uh, commitment to working for the people's mandate i mean uh, despite being electoral rivals they have maintained a very cordial relationship since 2011 based on these mutual values and respect so um, uh, whether uh, you know the the your um, survey has also said that uh, people uh, on the bigger uh, level are uh, you know looking forward that nda would come into the power because somewhere uh, they align with the ideology of nda and not the congress or the indi alliance Uh, so in orissa whether it is the bjd or the bjp and yes uh, because in 2019 we did see that bjp stepped up they gained uh, you know eight seats uh, they might gain uh, uh, you know a larger share this uh, this time but whether the government is formed by the bjp or the bjd i think they ideologically align very well and they would work uh, you know hand in hand together uh, with the center and the state Okay, I'm going to bring in Piyush Pant as well. Piyush Pant, what is your assessment as far as uh, Odisha is concerned? Well, uh, uh, I see Odisha a uh, uh, complete freedom of Mr. Pat Navin Patnaik. You know, he he has been ruling there. He has been chief minister for the uh, five terms, and he is likely to be elected again the chief minister of uh, Odisha because. there is not very big challenge to uh, navin patnaik's regime in odisha uh, little bit anti incumbency is there but not because of his performance but because of other factors because you know, a longer period always breeds you know a little bit of uh, anti incumbency uh, something going wrong here something going wrong there but overall he is very popular leader because he doesn't talk much he believes in uh, In, in delivering the things he has uh, carried out many pro people policies in the sector of education in the sector of health uh, uh, so he is very popular there he has brought uh, uh, odisha out of the bimaru status you know it was very backward area you know we, we used to hear uh, there uh, about the hunger and all this kala handi was a very mentionable name uh, throughout the world if you talk about the poverty uh immediately the kala handi is name strikes in your mind so but he brought uh, urisa out of that moras so he is very popular and this time again he is going to win the election as far as i can uh, see it uh and that's why bjp wanted to have an alliance because bjp is trying hard since uh, 2014 to gain uh, footing in urisa they have been successful little bit but at the cost of Uh, the congress uh, vote bank uh, uh, they have not been able to uh, uh, cut down the vote uh, uh, share of the uh, bjd they are trying hard uh, but i think they are unable to find a find more space in uh, odisha that's why this time they wanted to have an alliance and also because uh, pradhan mantri narendra modi uh, was not very confident of uh, uh, gaining uh, 370 seats in lok sabha uh that's why he wanted an alliance with the biju janata dal to have more seats because the target bjp has uh, put a target of uh, at least uh, 18 lok sabha seats for themselves and 80 to 120 vidhan sabha seat assembly seats uh but they are uh, finding it hard so they wanted to have an alliance but since uh, biju janata dal wanted uh, more than 100 seats uh in the in the uh, seat sharing arrangement to which bjp did not agree so it fell down the talks fell down and now they are uh, fighting it alone but i think they have got an understanding also because uh, uh, bjp is happy that if uh, bjd is uh, uh, in odisha it's fine as far as bjd supports uh, bjp at the center and this has been happening uh, always though officially 
last time you know the the previous lok sabha during the previous lok sabha bjd was not the partner of uh, uh, nda but for all practical purposes on all important legislations on all important bills it supported you had it supported bjp government at the center so they are partner at the center level and moreover nagin patnaik is not very ambitious person he doesn't have ambition out of odisha he doesn't want to expand bjd out of odisha hmm. he wants to concentrate in odisha only that's why he has been able to give a quality administration in odisha that so he has an understanding with the bjp he knows that uh, the, he needs central funds for odisha so if uh, he is in good equation with narendra modi government at the center he will be getting uh, the funds uh, which are due uh, for the odisha so he is very practical man uh, i i think that's why you know he has been uh, there uh, at the helm of the affairs in odisha and uh, he is going to be again uh, if uh, his health permits it he is going to uh, again the chief minister of uh, odisha i am very sure about it okay all right manasvi thapar bring you back from the conversation manasvi as far as odisha is concerned what really is then your assessment um, of uh, it as per a lot of uh, pre poll analysis it does seem that yes as far as the assembly elections are concerned bjd uh, expected to retain but do you feel that from last time around when the bhartiya janata party was able to make certain inroads as far as lok sabha polls are concerned that some of that could also translate into the assembly election results see what what one thing we need to understand is that bjp is very aggressive in terms of getting and garnering more vote share in states which they don't have any control of so if we if we classically look at uh, odisha so bjp was at single digit at one particular time i think in 2009 it was at single digit vote share and today when we we talk about the lok sabha of 2019 they have a vote share of around 38% and while bjd has a vote share of around 42% while congress has been reduced to 12% and congress have just one mp from odisha while bjp has increased its tally to 8, to 8 uh, yes. from the previous election from 2014 they have jumped up seven more seats and as of now they look very strong they have a Odi Odisha reach out program. They have this understanding with the karyakartas. They have they are trying to create that leadership. But the, in in terms of assembly election, they are no match to BJD. The kind of popularity any particular person in this country could have enjoyed as a chief minister is uh, Navin Patnaik. You can't take that away from him. He has been the one of the longest serving chief ministers of India. And though there could be some kind of sense of in, uh, anti incumbency, but that has not reached to a level where people would people of Odisha would want to change a chief minister. and there are two reasons to this uh, the the inadequacy of congress and bjp to create a local leader to create a leadership which can challenge the leadership of the bjd uh, is not been there his policies his connect his his attitude towards people is top notch in terms of getting votes and he is very as as my previous uh, 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 mr pant said that he is not very ambitious so he is not uh, in the eye of any of the larger leaders like the prime minister or any previous mm. ones that he could be a, a a speed breaker to their progress so he has been only concentrated on his territory that is the odisha territory and he is very happy with it and most importantly people are also happy and consistently otherwise no person could for five long terms could be repeated and there has been no gap it's a continuous process and he's been there so this kind of achievement of any political leader is rare in today's time wherein people just change immediately in within within in 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 a term of 5 years we have seen three chief minister four chief minister being changed while he is a consistent man it's, it's a political lesson i think all the political leaders who aspire to become a uh, good leader should take political lessons from navin patnaik how do you be so when he started his journey as a political leader uh, in 2004 at that particular time as a chief minister uh, what he was he has in, uh, transformed his vision he has transformed himself Uh, to a new Navin Patnaik every election. If we talk about the assembly elections of Odisha, that is the kind of narrative he has given to the people of Odisha and his understanding. At the national level, he does not <coughs> take political shots at any leaders, be it at Congress or at BJP. Whoever is at in the power, be it in the Congress during the UPA time or be it at the NDA time, he is a supportive member. He has not gone against any political party in center. He understands that politics very well. Hmm. He is a regional political player. He understands that I am a regional political player. I don't have aspirations. I don't have the funds. I don't have the resources to be a national leader. I am no challenge to any political party in that front. So he is maintaining his status quo very well. That kind of maintenance of status quo we have not seen in Indian politics. So this is what is 
Navin Patnaik for the world that you have to understand him. So when you understand him, you in the last 20 years of his tenure, he's not the one who's who's taking uh, political shots or at the UPA during the UPA times or at uh, at NDA. So he makes friends with anyone. He does not have an alliance ideology. He has a BJD ideology, which he follows very well. And then whoever comes in the center, he's trying to be friends with them. And that is how federalism functions. That's how you understand the union and the states to work out. So he's making that classic case of understanding how do you have the responsibility, roles and duties of a chief minister vis-a-vis -vis -vis the prime minister and the uh, Council of Ministers, we understand. So wherever he has to take a step back for the national ambition of any political party at the state, he uh, at the national level, he takes that step. And when it comes to his state, he does not budge in. He does not budge out saying that I'll, I'll, I'll take less numbers. He said, I'll, I'll have this many quantity of MLS which are required for my development or my vision of Odisha. This is what, this is what I'll do. But there has been a vacuum in Odisha in terms of counter-narrative, right. in terms of counter-parallel that this is my vision of Odisha yes. from the and, Congress and, and, coming and out Marashi, or, or yes, the BJP coming out. That's missing. And we've also seen that. We've also seen that uh, playing out quite aggressively in some of the other states. Karnataka, of course, continues to be... Uh, the JDS has been reduced to almost nothing by both the BJP and the Congress. So they've managed to figure out uh, what works in Karnataka. As far as Telangana is concerned, like I said in the beginning itself, Congress has uh, had a sweeping victory uh, in Telangana. In some of the other states, we've seen a very aggressive position by the BJP as far as Tamil Nadu is concerned, trying to make those inroads in Tamil Nadu. Kerala continues to be a clear, uh, you know, Congress continues to have some sort of influence as far as Kerala is concerned. But you're right in, uh, in your assessment that as far as Urissa is concerned, it seems as though the effort uh, overall is lacking. I think Dr. Mukesh Maling of the BJP is also with us on the broadcast. Bhaskar Ghosh of the BJP with us on the broadcast. Mr. Ghosh, uh, I just want to understand from your perspective, uh, is there a lack of effort as far as uh, coming up with some sort of a regional figure in Odisha is concerned for the BJP? No, I think we have got a regional figure. Yeah, Sumit Patra is there. Our, uh, one of the topmost leaders, our cabinet minister Dharminder Pradhanji is there. And don't forget, uh, Odisha BJP has founded by uh, the father of Dharmendra Pradhanji. And I think that is why we have decided to go to assembly as well as uh, Lok Sabha elections. So uh, as far as our uh, strength in the uh, 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 Odisha is concerned, we are absolutely like Bengal. We are absolutely independent. We don't need... Okay, Mr. Ghosh, uh, at the same time, uh, why do you think that uh, the people of Odisha, when we ask them what their key voting matters for the Lok Sabha elections are, uh, at a very high rate, people said unemployment followed by development. How does the BJP plan on addressing these concerns? Of course, I think um, if you see the Bikshit Bharat uh, concept of Modi ji, then it's very clear that over the past of 10 days, uh, sorry, 10 years, whatever we have done for the different cross-section of people, and it has been uh, already been focused, already been uh, published in the white uh, paper we have uh, already given uh, in the uh, Lok Sabha, in the parliament, that uh, uh, nobody can deny it, be it... Uh, uh, Ujjala Yojana, be it Pradhan Mantri Abbas Yojana, be it uh, um, in the health sector, Ayush, be it uh, whatever it is. I and mean, the kind of infrastructure we have built for the last 10 years, which has kept India as number two position after China in the Southeast Asia. So you cannot say that, okay, we have to prove uh, that we have done the development part of it. As far as the unemployment is concerned, again, it is a hoax created by the opposition that in how this huge infrastructure, how this huge growth is possible without, without employing people. You just make me understand. Without employing people, how this is possible? So this is just a hoax created by the opposition. 
and uh, uh, people are understanding it and wherever uh, our bikash purush modi ji our brand ambassador modi ji is coming with a modi ji's guarantee and everyone he is getting an tremendous response be it in uh, up be it in bihar be it in orissa and it will go on and on it will increase farther uh, over the time so uh, there is no questions okay. in fact mr ba uh, mr ghosh then at the same time how is the bjp hoping to improve its numbers in odisha because we've seen a lot of emphasis uh, on the south by the prime minister himself where he's held several rallies uh, he in fact began his election tour with certain southern states but we did not see as much as far as odisha is concerned a lot of focus was on telangana even more focus on tamil nadu what about odisha no in odisha of course the prime minister is giving importance and our senior most leader mr dharmendra pradhan is there and uh, he will be um, spearheading the entire uh, entire uh, uh, elections uh, over there dr samit patra is there a lot of people are there and prime minister obviously will go there on right time no one is ignoring odisha there is no point there is no point. i mean there is no no question of ignoring odisha Okay, Chandni Preeti Shah, uh, you know your assessment uh, of the same. Then does it somewhere, maybe in terms of just a narrative, come across as though the BJP is not as focused on Odisha as it is on other states? Uh, no, it's not like BJP is not very focused on uh, uh, Odisha and it's focused on other states. Uh, it is. It has, uh, you know, uh, got uh, uh, made a decision that it will be um, competing, contesting from all the seats. But there's a very uh, basic core difference between, uh, you know, BJP, BJD, and the INDI alliance. I mean. Uh, BJP and BJD, as you said, they disagreed on seat sharing, but they would never resort to abuse, abusing each other. Unlike the INDI alliance that we see, where they are working together, uh, they are working together. If they are not working together, they are, you know, casting aspersions on each other. So BJP and BJP, they work together for the betterment of the state, whether they are together or whether they are not together. like their cooperation extends to supporting each other whether it's on crucial legislations whether it's on policies whether it's on presidential elections i mean navin patnayak has ra uh, praised uh, narendra modi on his uh, foreign policies on his anti corruption initiatives uh, uh, in an interview i guess he has ra he rated him uh, 8 out of 10 in these areas even bk pandian who is a close aide of navin patnayak has also maintained that you know both these leaders share a great friendship and they see certain things that are that is beyond politics so when it comes to uh, you know uh, elections and when it comes to the people what what the people of orissa want i think there's a big no no when it is uh, when we are talking about congress or indi alliance uh, 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 when it comes to orissa or on the uh, on, on on the bigger front but it's a it's a big yes to the ideology of bjd and bjp and also when you know because we are talking about unemployment uh, there is a very um, a uh, a uh, uh, wrong narrative that is being spread that uh, there has been no employment at all uh, there are uh, you know reports of and data of uh, you know Uh, employees provident fund organization and employees state insurance corporation and this data says that every month uh, in the past 10 years on average 28 lakh subscribers have subscribed uh, that means on an average every year 3 crore people are subscribing to uh, e epfo and esc esic and that means in the last 10 years 33.6 crore that is almost 34 crore people subscribe okay. now experts that say that 63% is the conversion rate of this so if even if we you know convert 30 uh, 63% of uh, 34 crore that comes to around uh, 21.42 crores that that much job has been created so when it, you know because there we have the data that was shared with uh, shared no, by Chani, mr we, we continue to talk about the data when it comes to the numbers yes. on paper it seems like things are going fine but then why is it that people continue to then raise unemployment as the biggest issue clearly there some there must be something that's happening on the ground see there are there are issues with uh, you know uh, uh, laying off there are issues that you know uh, when you come when it comes to certain states that have uh, you know uh, government jobs that are uh, going uh, you know post getting postponed these are these are kind of uh, you know uh, 
problems that we are facing but when it comes uh, to the facts that whether the jobs are being created or not that is a secondary th- i mean that's the uh, different thing jobs are being created whether people are uh, able to maintain with the job or not is a different issue altogether but okay. jobs are being created the data is not lying okay all right uh, piyush pant bring you back in the conversation mr pant uh, is the bjp also then somewhere relying on uh, the popularity of anavin patnaik yes of course the bjp wants to get more seats uh, every party wants to improve its own vote share and seat share of course but are they somewhere also relying on anavin patnaik uh, uh, you know sweeping the polls once again and then extending support <coughs> to the bjp oh uh, yes uh, for, first uh, first thing i want to clear that uh, about the data which even chandni uh, chandni shah was also quoting uh, and the bjp people most of the bjp people quoted and they say they put it forward that lot of employment is being created it is not so if you analyze the data you know uh, 50% of the data is of those people who discontinued with their job they again got themselves registered uh, Uh, for the job and and then they get this uh, deposited this uh, provident fund in their name so if you go and analyze it that and, and many analysis has been done about it so this uh, so this is not true picture you know this is the 50% your know, 50% uh, uh, there is a hype uh, being created so the scene is not that rosy as is being t- uh, tried to put forward by the bjp people or the bjp supporters you go honestly analyze the data you will find it that there, there are many defaulters Uh, in this they again registered themselves then their provident fund is cut and then the data comes that these, these many people have registered themselves so okay. so it is good that you should go and find the true data the, the right data not the uh, distorted data or the hype data uh, then you will find the real scene and the real scene at the ground level is very different very different that's why in all the surveys the 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 top priority uh, uh, of the uh, uh, electoral uh, you know issue is the issue of the unemployment okay all right i'll come so, back to you okay i'll come back to you in just a moment baskar ghosh how do you then respond to that uh, when we talk about unemployment continuing to be an issue how does the bjp then respond to this uh, problem let, let me respond to you technically now is just waiting for my co uh, panelists to answer there is two kind of an employment is there employment is there rather than employment employment is there one is the organized sector one is the unorganized sector now the organized sector employment we are counting on at the same time whatever my um, uh, fellow uh, debater has told that un- or unorganized sector also there is a the huge investment and the uh, uh, payment of the uh, epf and other statutory payments pf and epf is also going up it shows that until people are employed how they are giving their epf and all um, insurance and epf that means is going up and if it's not going up how the indexes in the economic indexes like gdp like the uh, exports like the uh, other indexes of the economics is going up so it is a very very direct correlation between the industrialization growth infrastructure development trade increase um, less dependence on imports more of an export of the voluminous export of different uh, items and which all together increasing the foreign exchange reserve of the country multifold since 2014 so it is very very uh, i think is a novice concept that all the indexes are growing up we are running 3 trillion to 5 trillion which is a 5 trillion dollar economy so how the employment could reduce it's like the you are pouring water and water and suddenly you see the water instead of pouring in spite of pouring the water level is going down it's not possible it's it, it's like a very uh, uh, a novice concept so all together economy is growing see every figure since 2014 it is on the upward scale be it right agriculture, absolutely like be it i said industry be it in service sector be it in exports mr gosh like i said on indexes. paper like i said on paper of course it seems that things are absolutely Madam fine you're right the paper the grow the, 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 and the, yes the yes please please let See me complete reserve, please reserve. let me complete sir. Yeah, sure. let me complete i'm saying yeah, on paper yeah, yes yeah, the yeah. numbers seem to be working really well and of course there is a lot of development infrastructural development that has happened for people to touch and feel 
when the metro is made or when the highway is made yes when people use it they can see the difference as far as Airport jobs are, airports that that comes under infrastructure sir i'm saying infrastructure trains everything that is made by the government centrally uh, or with the assistance of certain supporter state governments that is for people to touch feel and see and therefore they can see the transformation happening i'm talking specifically when we say about jobs is the data on paper not translating to the ground reality because in every survey back to back the topmost issue of people has been unemployment now let me let me tell you the other i mean let me show the uh, the half filled glasses you're mm -hmm. talking half empty if the employment is not there then how the growth engine is is moving on if the without employment how you can make such a huge progress and at the same time if the employment is not there how the spending power of individuals are growing how your consumer index is going up <laughs> how you are buying how is buying all the sectors of the consumer sector the uh, food sector the agri sector the purchase capacity is going up there is a huge growth in automobile sector how it is happening without creating employment how this has been built up and without building up how you are doing it you you answer me how your foreign reserve is increasing nobody is giving a, a donation to the india how the foreign reserve without trade without export been happening how the foreign reserves going up and you make me understand everything is going up but on, on how we are winning one after another election last three election of madhya pradesh rajasthan and um, chatisgarh how we have won it if everyone is dissatisfied everyone is frustrated if, if there, there is no employment there is a huge un un unemployment how we are winning with a record margin you make me okay. understand right. politically yeah. and okay. economically i want to bring okay i want to bring manasvi into the conversation manasvi as per you uh, or in your assessment what do you think could be the reason as to why poll after poll people have said unemployment continues to be their biggest poll issue what could possibly be going wrong see one thing is that bjp is winning election other thing is that that india is not problem free so these are two facts india is not 100% employed employed or 80% employed india does have employment issues that's also one of the facts winning election is one alag different machinery and getting the economics of our country and employment solved is another machine so all of them does not have to be correlated with each other so that's one part of the segment so wh what we are trying to confuse is here that we are winning election that's why Uh, people are employed or people are employed that's why we are winning election this is not how the statistics or economics would function so what is happening is in a democracy whoever gets the largest vote share is going to win an election so bjp with around 28 to 35% of the vote share with an intact solid vote share is winning election that's there be it at national level or at the state level they're winning it but that also means there is a vote share which is against bjp which is around 65 to 70 percent against BJP, not not voting for it. Obviously, segregated, divided between regional political parties, national political parties. That's why they don't get a concentrated vote share and are confused. A uh, voter becomes confused. So these all things together uh, is not helping them to come in power. They don't have a narrative. They don't. That's that's a different political strategy. But that does not mean at all just because someone is winning an election or someone is winning something, the strategy is right for them. or strategy is right for the team or the country it is not that case yes as my previous panel panelist from bjp said that they are winning election people are voting for you not that 100% people are voting from the, for them and not that 100% people will vote for any political party that is also not going to happen the only thing what is going to happen here is that yes employment is an issue we need to solve it up and i believe that in the third term bjp is going to work on that particular segment also in terms of infra they have done good in terms of uh creating a hindu solid vote bank with ram mandir with caa they have done that also very consolidated which has never happened in the past they have done that so the the basic reason of them winning would be article 370 ram mandir and caa and now in the third term it is going to be purely on the development uh, the, when the fourth term they'll be eyeing would be it would be purely on the plank of what they have done apart from the article 370 ca and the ram mandir it would it would be what have you done for the people then this question will pinch them more on unemployment in the next term not in the this term this election this is not going to touch anyone 
though there would be unemployment issues but that is not going to be the narrative of this particular election this particular election the bjp uh, people have already nailed it out they are not worried about this particular election they should not be whatever they had done whatever they should have done they have presented it well opposition is not very well uh, well while while we are speaking about odisha the uh, what i am been understood congress does not have declared their seats as of now so that is the preparedness between bjp bjd and congress so uh, bjd and bjp are steps ahead while they are still on their drawing board thinking that who will be the uh, candidates for them and we have seen across the country that people are not ready stalwarts are not ready to fight elections in congress so this is the kind of a confused or a or or a strategy of not a strategy not it would be like they're not willingness the willingness is not there the fire to fight an election a democracy can all, only survive if there is an opposition which has a fire to question while they're losing out the fire to stand up even when they know that they're going to lose out that fire somehow has been washed out by prime minister narendra okay. modi's narrative it is not the bjp which is well oiled it is the prime minister who makes the bjp well oiled so that is the difference and that is the power of this particular person if you have to fight an election uh, you have to think like prime minister narendra modi if you have to fight an election you have to understand what he is trying to put, portray his narrative is not 20 uh, 2024 or 2029 what is he putting out 2047 look at the narrative while he is working he is not working that is up to him to know as an individual but the narrative is so high that you can't even match up so right. this is that uh, environment that aura he creates around him that everyone is talking about him so everyone talks about what he is doing it out and you don't have a parallel understanding of what is your election plan on 2024 saving up a chief minister from a prison will not help the plan of winning an entire country so this is that confused voter uh, pulse which you don't get it so right. that getting the pulse of the voter is very important to fight an election and pulse changes every 6 months pulse change every election and this particular person narendra modi ji if you look from his first when he was he was not elected he was selected in bjp as a chief minister in gujarat from the 2000s to 2024 every 5 years he has changed himself he has been a different narendra modi a narendra modi of 2000 2002 is different from 2007 and 2012 and 14 19 and 24 right. all people are different so that okay. is what he reincarnates himself in politics he creates a new narrative for the voters he he gives them something okay. bigger better okay. or bigger problems to counter okay so all right that that narrative has to be followed if you have to fight today's election okay so coming back piyush pan bring you back into the conversation and uh, bring you the focus a little bit back on odisha specifically coming back to the question i asked you uh, when we talk about then strong leadership uh is the bjp somewhere then perhaps relying on a navin patnaik continuing on his streak of over two decades uh maybe increasing its uh, vote share and seat share just by a little bit in odisha maybe possibly but relying largely upon a navin patnaik sweeping the state election also uh, winning enough seats in the lok sabha to then extend support you see uh uh the well, bjp is a party which wants to expand itself you know and so they won't be content contented to be confined to say 23 24 25 seats only sir they want, they they are striving for more seats because they are power hungry always they want to rule the whole of india all the states so they want to they wish to but uh, they can't do it they have realized it that's why they wanted to enter into alliance with the bjd Uh, because they know the performance of biju janata dal and navin patnaik they cannot challenge navin patnaik uh, uh, in odisha uh, so they they have now realized it so and they they have been getting support of biju patnaik at at the center and they know he he has been a good supporter on all crucial uh, piece of laws uh, he has been there with the bjp <laughs> Uh, so, and they will they would i think the the bjp will prefer to have him uh, have a good supporter like him uh, at the center you know so i think uh, there there is an understanding between the two parties because uh, now the bjp has realized and and if you if you look at you should see even uh, bjp has a better chances maybe because of prime minister modi or because they are well organized uh, uh, machinery elect- electoral machinery whatever it is they have a better chances at the lok sabha level that's why you know 
many ex many MPs and MLAs from uh, even from BJD they, uh, they have they, they have left the party and joined the Congress. But it is not so at the level of this uh, uh, MLAs. Uh, so the attraction for BJP is uh, bigger at the level of Lok Sabha okay. election than the state level. So uh, I think there is an understanding between BJP and the BJD that BJP is good if uh, they get, but they want more seats as they have declared, even the state leadership has declared uh, 18 to 19 seats, uh, Lok Sabha seats for, for the BJP and there is time for okay. 80 to uh, 120. Okay. Bansal has said 80 seats for BJP. We are trying for 80 seats. We will achieve 80 seats. Right. But uh, the, the state president has said we will get 120 seats. We are striving for okay. 120 seats. Okay. I'm but gonna... I think that is, that, that is, that is a far-fetched uh, you know, expectation. And of course, uh, they know it very well. But they would like okay. to get want to get more seats at the state level. Okay. But All moreover, right. they want to expand themselves at the national level. So okay. they want All more right. seats at Lok Sabha level. All right. Chandi Preeti Shah, leave the last word with you. When the BJP sets itself a target of Abki Bar Char Supar, does the BJD play a crucial role in reaching that number in a post-poll scenario? Um, you know, BJD, uh, as you know, uh, I have said earlier that it ideologically inclines to uh, with uh, BJP a lot. And um, uh, whether it uh, plays a crucial role, uh, somewhere it does because, uh, you know, down the line, uh, I see uh, BJP and BJD, uh, you know, being allies uh, together, coming together because there always has been a chance and there always has been, uh, you know, a room where BJD and BJP can ally officially. So, uh, uh, but uh, is it on a very larger scale? Will it impact on a very larger scale? No, it won't. And uh, just one one more thing that I wanted to correct, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Pant said that there, there uh, uh, in the employment data that, you know, there are repetitions and, you know, there are things. That is the reason I said that there is 63% of conversion rate and I shall bring it down to more. I shall bring it down to 50% and then also there is 17 crore jobs created. I was talking about the jobs created, not about how much of the uh, employment, uh, you know, has been retained by the people. People, but the jobs that have been created, if even if we consider 50%... Yes, but Chani, at the same time, it goes hand in hand, right? You can say that, okay, what we created 100 it? crore jobs, <laughs> but job retention is also then a big challenge. I'm not saying perhaps the government will work on it. In the Perhaps the coming governments will work of on course, it. But I'm saying that, that when we talk about employment in the country, we have to speak about it uh, in a longer, larger sense rather than just simply, yes, job creation is the first step, but job retention then becomes the second step as well. Yes, true. But then again, if you see that there have been 50 crores given in mudra loan. So there right. were like 340 startups between, uh, before 2014. Today, there are 150... Uh, 115,000 uh, startups in India, more than 100 uh, unicorns in India. So, you know, it's not just that there are people who are seeking jobs. Now, people are even job givers. So, it's not just... The number, of, are, the number you know, of unicorns has come down, madam. And the number of unicorns has come down. No, see, ultimately, Mr. Pant, the, data, ultimately Mr. Pant, the numbers do, of course, uh, you know, on the one hand, one creates jobs. And as uh, pointed out, Chandni, as well, that uh, you end up not retaining that job. Similarly, for startups as well, uh, one has to look into the figures as far as how many startups make it after the first year as well uh, of uh, retaining their position uh, in the market. Uh, Manasvi wants to uh, make a point there. My my point of simple conjunction would be that that the jobs would have been not been retained, but there is a global meltdown. That is also something yes. which we need to yes, take, absolutely. take no, a look at it. Absolutely, this, right is, this is this is a time of the same of 2007, 2008, and yet in 2008 also India survived. Yet India will survive. And further, the difference of that India and uh, present India would be that Indian entrepreneurs are much more empowered. They don't depend uh, on government. They don't depend on policies. They create their own way. So uh, it's a very a robust economy because of the people. Though there are policies, but people are much more empowered than what they were 10 or two, uh, two decades ago. So this is very interesting as an India story. India story, it's not about the political story of India. Uh, while we give so much of space to the politicians, it's for, uh, it's about the entrepreneurs, the okay. youth of this nation who are actually building on it. So right. the job, yes, layoffs are there. Look at the layoffs happening in America. If you compare it with China, so we are not even that even right, 10% right, right. to Absolutely. the layoffs which they do. Okay, all right. Uh, unfortunately, that's all the time that I have. For more such videos, 
सब्सक्राइब टू द न्यूज एक्स यूट्यूब चैनल हिट द बेल आइकन